what's happening. Welcome to in-house story time with Miss Adaria's hands and voice. Woo! So today we're going to be reading these wonderful books and they're all going to be frog centric because it's a time of frogs. Frogs are everywhere and they're really wonderful and I live on a pond and I hear them all the time and I see them jumping around so we're just going to do a little frog homage and uh, hope everybody's having fun. You're excited to get back to school. Happy first day of school. If this is your first day, please be safe, be happy, and all that good stuff. So um, this story is called Leap Back Home to Me by Lauren Thompson and illustrated by Matthew Cordell. Look how cute that is. To me, that looks like a mama frog and a baby frog. Leapfrog over the ladybug. Leapfrog over the bee. You see that? Look at the ladybug's wings. Aren't they sweet? I mean the bee's wings. I like that a lot. <laughs> Leapfrog over the tickly clover. Plip. That's the noise I imagine the frog is making when it's leaping over the clover like that. <laughs> then leap back home to me. Whee! Look at Mama with her arms up. Like, come on, you can do it. Did you ever play leapfrog when you were a kid? That was fun, wasn't it? Jumping over your cousin's back or your friend's back. Sometimes you guys knock each other over and you just laugh and laugh. Leapfrog over daisies. Leapfrog over the creek. Pretty pictures, aren't they? Leapfrog over the splashing beavers. Spring! <laughs> Look at the little feet waving. They're all waving. They're like, that was fun. Do that again. Then leap back home to me. Bye-bye. See ya. Hey, I'm going to get to color. Yay. Coloring with mom on the lily pad. Dig that rustic furniture. Leapfrog over the owl's nest. Leapfrog over the trees. Whee! Look at the owl. It's like, what's going on here? What exactly is going on here? Leapfrog over the rocky hilltop. Whee! <laughs> I see that what looks like mountain goats or sh mountain sheep going. How is a frog going over the mountain? Tremendous leg strength, that's how. Leapfrog over the mountains. <laughs> Leapfrog over the sea. Woo! He's flying along the rainbow. That's right. Looks like a superhero. You know, when you have one arm out and the arm behind and you're flying through the sky. All you need is a cape. Leapfrog over the roaming clouds. Whoosh! <laughs> this is a funny book. Leapfrog over the sun. Wow, that's very ambitious. Leapfrog as high as you please. The birds are like, hey, you're going higher than we are. Leapfrog out to the farthest stars. Zoom! Wow, now this frog is going interplanetary. That's pretty cool. When you leap home, here I'll be. Aww. That's really sweet. Look at all the stars. It's a starry night. And uh, Lauren Thompson dedicates this book for Kevin, and Matthew Cordell de dedicates this book for Julie and Rami. Wasn't that a sweet book? So come and get it. Leap, leap back home to me. You can leap into the library and grab that book. And now we're going to read this fabulous book. It's called Growing Up Tadpole to Frog. I'm gonna keep that one in there so you can see it. 
Now this is more of a sciencey book and I think it's really great. Look at all these cool frogs. There's so many frogs, aren't there? And this book was written by Brenna Maloney. And it's Explore the Life Cycle. We have these at the library. We have like sunflower seed to a flower. We have tadpole to a frog. We have a lot of books like this that we just got in. They're new books. They're gonna be on the new bookshelf. And you could follow the life cycle of a living creature or a, a plant, which is also a living creature. So here we go. Fantastic frogs. Look at that frog. Oh my goodness. Look at those cool legs. Many frogs have webbed feet that help them swim with power. And a frog breathes and drinks through its skin. Did you know that? A frog is an amphibian. Amphibian means two lives. Frogs begin their lives in the water. When they are adults, they live on land. Frogs change as they grow. That process is called metamorphosis. You know, a tadpole, right? There are many types of frogs. Some are smaller than a coin. Others are as big as a cat. Imagine seeing a frog that big, meow. It starts with an egg. It takes time to grow from a tadpole to a frog, and this is different for every species, but all frogs begin their lives the same way, inside a tiny egg. Female frogs of most species lay their eggs in water. Inside each egg are cells that were, will grow into a tadpole. You see these, the black dot in each of these eggs is the beginning of a tadpole. A female frog can lay thousands of eggs at a time. Whoa, that's pretty cool. A tadpole looks a bit like a fish. It doesn't have legs, it just has a mouth, gills, and tail. Gills help the tadpole breathe underwater. You know, sometimes the young tadpoles swim together in schools the way fish do, and that's probably for their protection. At first, the tadpole sticks close to floating weeds or grasses. Later, it starts to swim around and feed on algae. And just another fun fact, it can take any time, anywhere from six to 21 days for a tadpole to hatch from one of those little eggs until it looks like these little squiggly guys. Tadpoles, beware! Dun, dun, dun. The very early stages of a frog's life can be very dangerous. For tadpoles, the risk of being eaten is very high. This is especially true right after they hatch. Hiding among the water plants helps them stay safe from predators like fish and birds and even insects. Insects like this great diving beetle larva eat tadpoles that they catch in the water. Fish like this rud can gobble up many tadpoles. And oh, I don't want to tell you this, but sometimes older tadpoles eat the younger tadpoles. No. No, big sister. Time to change. A tadpole develops lungs, which will enable it to breathe air. Depending on the species, it can take days or weeks. As the tadpole grows teeth, it can eat small insects instead of just plants. The tadpole also grows back legs so it can kick when it swims. The back legs form first on a tadpole. It looks like a mysterious alien creature now, doesn't it? those little legs like oh here we go becoming a froglet there's frogs and there's froglets next the tadpole becomes a froglet its body becomes more like that of an adult frog the froglet's lungs get bigger and its gills disappear the shape of its head changes and its eyes start to bulge the froglet grows thin front legs with skinny fingers and its tail starts to shrink. Because it doesn't need that tail when it's up on the land, right? Like in adult frogs, the froglet's two front legs have four toes each. The back legs have five toes each. So four in the front and five in the back. And like an adult frog, the froglet has eyes on the top of its head that means that the frog can see in almost every direction. It's good to see when you're so tasty. 
into adulthood. When its tail finally disappears, the frog is ready to leave the water. It hops on land and breathes air. Adult frogs spend a lot of time on land, but most frogs need to stay near water or wet places. If they don't, what do you think would happen? That's right, their skin will dry out. A thin layer of skin covers a frog's ear holes. It keeps dirt and water out. That's pretty cool. I, would, I wouldn't mind having green scaly looking skin like that instead of this color with freckles. <laughs> Just for a change. Skin deep. Frogs don't drink water. That's interesting. I don't think I knew that. Any moisture they need passes through their skin. Their skin can also absorb oxygen from water. That enables them to breathe underwater. A frog sheds its skin often. It wriggles out of its old skin, pulling it over its head like a sweater. And often the frog eats the skin. This water-holding frog is getting rid of its old skin. It's kind of cool. Shed your skin. Look at that cool frog down there. Isn't that amazing? Whoa. Look at that belly of the frog. It's so cool. It almost looks like a tie-dye shirt. Sticky situation. Frogs are carnivores. Small frogs eat insects such as flies, moths, and dragonflies. Larger frogs eat grasshoppers and worms. Almost all frogs use their sticky tongues to catch a meal. Blah! The tongue snaps out and wraps around the prey. Then it throws the prey into the frog's mouth. The frog blinks as it swallows. That presses the frog's eyeballs onto its mouth to push the food down its throat. A frog can snatch an insect faster than you can blink, and a frog's tongue is attached to the front of its mouth. Look at that frog getting its lunch, and it leapt right out of the water. You can still see the droplets of water, and you see how this frog's back feet are webbed, but the front feet are not. And there's the four and there's the five. Frog predators. Adult frogs have predators too. They must hide from birds and reptiles. Their bodies are often dark on top and light on the bottom. When seen from above, the frog's back blends in with the dark water. When seen from below, its light belly blends with the sky. That is cool. So snakes, lizards, and reptiles eat frogs on land. There's a snake. There's an, a, a lizard. There's a bird. Birds like this heron snatch frogs and froglets from the water. Mmm, sushi! Finding a partner. When frogs are two or three years old, they look for a mate. Male frogs call out to female frogs. Each species of frog has its own special call. They croak, squeak chirp and grunt. A female chooses a male, then she finds a spot where she will lay her eggs, the frog pair mates, and the life cycle begins again! Yay! The male frog inflates his vocal sacs to attract a mate. And uh, if you live down near a pond or a lake, you can hear them all summer. Some frog calls are so loud they can be heard a mile away. What did you say? Frog facts. A group of frogs is called an army. <laughs> there they are. Frogs are ectothermic. That means their body temperature changes with the temperature of their surroundings. Frogs live on every continent except Antarctica, where I think a lot of ants live. No, they don't. <laughs> no. Penguins, yes. Ants, no. The glass frog is see-through. You can look through its skin to see its heart beating and its stomach digesting food. What? That's cool. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Many frogs can leap more than 10 times their body length. The, wax, the waxy monkey frog oozes a wax that it rubs all over its body and this wax acts like a sunscreen. Wow, that's a cool looking frog, isn't it? Look at those eyes, wow. And it comes with its own waxy sunscreen. 
When Darwin's frog tadpoles hatch, the male frog swallows them. He keeps them in his vocal sac for 60 days while they grow. Then he opens his mouth and fully formed frogs hop out. <laughs> now that is daddy daycare if I've ever heard it. The African clawed frog doesn't have a teeth or a tongue. It uses its hands to push food into its mouth. Wow, that's cool. Frog facts, my favorite. And you know, there's um, there's a, a old Mark Twain story, you know, the same guy that wrote Huckleberry Finn and so many other books. He wrote this book called The Jumping Frog of Calaveras County, and it's all about uh, this town in, in up in Angel's Camp uh, in Calaveras County, California, a town called Angel's Camp, where they used to have frog jumping contests up there. And they, uh, I used to work at a fairgrounds up there for a, a music festival when I lived in California, and they had the records of how far the frogs had jumped. So that was pretty cool. Growing up from tadpole to frog. So a frog goes through a complete metamorphosis as it grows. The time it takes to grow from a tadpole to a frog is different for every species. Look at these beautiful frogs. Look at all those colors. Oh my goodness, they're beautiful eyes. All this wonderful color that they have. Sometimes frogs are brightly colored like this because they're poisonous to other animals and they want to say, hey, please don't eat me because it'll be bad news for you. So eggs to the tadpole, to the tadpole with legs, to the froglet, to the adult. And it just keeps going around. It's the life cycle, right? Yeah. And that's some words that we were using throughout the book. So uh, here, Brenna Mahoney is a writer and an editor. If she could be a frog, she would want to be a desert rain frog because they look ridiculous and they sound like a dog squeak toy. <laughs> look them up. Thank you, Brenna. Somebody else that's totally interested in frogs besides me. So uh, we hope you enjoyed your story time today. This is wonderful. Come, come into the library. We have plenty of books on frogs, whether they're, you know, fun stories like this one or they're more scientific and fact-based like this one. We have all sorts of good stuff for you. So come into the library, enjoy, happy reading, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Take care. Ooh. Ooh. Hey, what's happening? Look at me, I'm sharpening my pencil and it's it's sort of working. Doing it the old fashioned way. Alright, there we go. So we're Welcome to the crafting portion of your story time today. And because we were reading such cool stories about frogs, we're going to make a frog. Yay! So what you'll need is, this is actually a paper towel roll that I cut in half, or I cut a bit off of, because I didn't want to make a really long frog. We're going to make a this size frog. And I've got the paper to wrap it with. I have some googly eyes, we've got some glue, and we're gonna cut out feet and hands too, so that uh, it looks like a real frog, sort of toilet paper roll. I don't know how far this frog can jump, but I'll try to make her jump as far as possible. So we're gonna start with this, and you notice that I'm using scrap paper because we like to use our paper up instead of just waste it. Um, you know, cut these two things out, then throw, throw it away. We don't do that. Even recycling it is a little bit of a waste because you can always use this half. This half is perfectly good. So let us roll up. Actually, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna approximate it, but then we're gonna have to trim that down but I just want to make sure that I have enough to roll it this way. And then we do, we do, hooray. Great, so let's see. I'm gonna make a little pencil mark. Here, we'll go this side, because this side is the side I cut and it's not exactly even. Make a little pencil mark. 
make sure it's nice and even. Okay, I think we could do that. And do you know what we're going to do? Because we're so ingenious here. We're going to use the book to finish the pencil mark, but don't write on the book. You can angle the pencil away from the book and use it as a ruler. That's all right. So there is our line. We're going to cut the line. Yes. And it should match our froggy poo here, and it does. So we're going to put some glue stick on. We haven't done a, a, a roll of paper towel or toilet paper roll critter in a long time, so I wonder if you remember how we glue it. We'll start over here. We'll glue this side down here. Put, you know, enough glue on that's going to stick. And you could just roll the toilet paper roll up and it should catch it. Ugh. Paper towel. Doesn't matter. The roll, the cardboard tube. There it is. And we're going to put some here on the end of this side. And it should stick on very nicely. Yes. Just roll that down and use your fingers and get in there and you can just roll this on and make sure that it's sticking on the ends. These ends are not being very cooperative, so I'm going to put some glue on the on the paper that is going to be receiving this end. So hopefully it'll it'll stick a little better. There we go, because we want it to be nice and last for a good long time. Maybe you can show your own grandchildren this fabulous frog that you made decades ago with Miss Adoria. <laughs> Yay! Look at that! Woohoo! Look at that! Very excited. Okay, so there's our frog body. And here, let's close up the glue. Put that over here. Filleta. And the next thing that we want to do is we're gonna cut out we're gonna draw and cut out some frog feet and some frog hands and remember what they said they said the frog feet had five so we'll start over here and we'll kind of go one two three four five that looks like a good frog foot doesn't it Left a little extra so we can make a little tab and kind of stick it on the bottom of there so it stays. What do you think about that? You think I could draw that again or should I cut that one out and trace it? Yes, I think you're right. Because we don't want him or her to have too much different of a foot. And I have another idea too. Why don't we make this a webbed foot? So you could just put a little web in here between the toes. Can you see that? So when you cut it out, you just cut down to the web part. Don't cut all the way down. But you can leave the pencil. Oh, oh see, look, I'm cutting it all the way down. I just did not follow my own advice. All right, and then we're going to leave the pencil mark side up up so you could see it. So all you need to do is cut these little tiny tips and then go around the web. Up and down and around the web. Sleep. And there is that marvelous frog foot. We're going to cut it a little bit longer because when I'm going to attach it like this underneath the frog, we want to make sure that there's enough room to stick the extra tab of paper up there. So let us trace this fabulous frog foot. 
We can have an exact replica of the froggy foot. Or near near exact replica. Oop. What is that? Make it pointy. Okay, and I'm gonna go down like that. And down like that. And down like that. Sort of maybe, but it's still another little webbed foot. Okie dokie, let's cut this guy out. And just remember to cut the web. And then go up for the little tippy toe. I held a frog the other day because a frog came into the garage and I didn't want the little froggy to get anything yucky on it. So I picked it up after a long struggle of me chasing it around the garage because they think I'm going to eat them. And I'm like, no, I promise I'm not going to eat you. I just want to set you free. And I examined the frog's front feet and back feet. And they're so cool. They have little, tiny little claws. Okay, so those are the, the front feet. Now, for the upper part of the their front legs, I'm going to do it in a different color. But we're also going to need to make a frog head, so we'll make it out of that same yellowy color. Let's just get these little pieces out of here for now. And so for the front legs, it only has four, remember? So we're just going to do one, two, three, four. And it's not webbed, right? I think I remember reading that, that their front feet are not webbed. So we're going to cut this one out and then make another one just like it. Okay. And it looks like the front legs are a little bit smaller than the back legs. Remember what the book said? They develop their back legs first so they can kick in the water, get away from predators, and just move around. Yeah. This almost looks like a dragon claw. Maybe we'll make a dragon toilet paper roll someday. I think that you will enjoy that very much. It's going to be very fancy, though, with scales and everything. Look at that little frog paw. Hello! I'm Frogpa. Get those scraps out of the way. And let's trace this one right here. We're using every last little tiny bit of this paper. <laughs> the tree would be so proud of us. Well, come down, go up. Here. And there's our other frog foot. Okie dokie. How many times can I say okie dokie in one story time? You count. I think I said it maybe three times already. Okie dokie. That's four. And one more little claw. Try not to cut off the last claw. Or toe, I guess I should call it. Frog toe. 
What do you think about that? This one looks a little bigger, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't think it matters that much, but they're kind of cute, aren't they? Ooh, with the feet. Look at my web feet and my big paws, my big front feet. And now we're going to make a little froggy face. And let's see. The froggy has a cute little face with big giant eyeballs. And it's kind of like, let's see, let me think, let me think. It's kind of like a circle with two little googly eyes. So, and I want to make it big enough so that it looks good on the toilet paper roll. So we'll do a circle with kind of like two kind of googly eyes. Here, I'll make this a little higher. Something like that, right? Okay. I didn't have enough room to put it up on that part. So let's put that aside and let's cut out our froggy face. Froggy face, froggy face, cutting out our froggy face. Froggy eyeballs on a froggy face. And we'll definitely turn this piece of paper over so you can't see the pencil marks. Because I was trying to make the eyeball area even. I'm actually going to cut into the circle a little bit. Hold on. I'll just even that up a little bit. Froggy face. My froggy face doesn't have to be perfect. But we're just going to make it a little more even. There we go. Froggy face. Yay, froggy face! Woo! So what should we do for our froggy face? I think that... Oh, hold on. Give me one second. To bring in the Sharpie. Da, da, da. So our froggy face is going to go like this. First, we're going to put a froggy nose. Yay, I can hear the bells. I don't know if you can hear the bells, but the church bell is ringing outside. That's a cute little froggy nose. Then we're gonna do a little froggy mouth. They usually have a pretty big wide mouth. And then we're gonna put the froggy eyeballs up here. But because I didn't have googly eyes that were as big as the frog's eyes, I think what I'm going to do is just draw the frog's eyes because I just didn't have the googly eyes that were big enough. They would look kind of silly. And I'm just, let me just look in this book for a second and see if we can get a good frog eye. Oh, there's a good one. Yeah, that's pretty good, I guess. Except their eyes are so interesting. They have a lot of things going on there. And the eyes are pretty much dark in the center, so we'll just give that a little. Uh, yeah, their pupils are really interesting. They kind of look um, like little almonds. So there's your little froggy head. And we're going to attach the feet first. And I'm going to use a little glue stick on this and hope it sticks. But if you want to, you can use, um, here, let's put something under here so I don't get it on the tablecloth. If you want to, you can use regular glue.
Just get, put enough glue stick on here. You can kind of fold that up a little bit. Let's see, where's that line? Okay. See what I'm doing? I press that little part of the tab inside of there and pressed it down pretty hard and then you could bring the foot back down. Isn't that cute? And then you could do the other one. Little froggy feet. Press that down in there. And then you can run a little glue over there so it sticks. You can bring the foot back down. Hello. There's your froggy feet. And for the froggy arms, you just pretty much want to put them like that, right on the back here. So be careful with the feet. You can work on it. You can just turn it around. Okay. Let's see which side we want to do it on. The side without the pencil marks. You could bend it a little bit so that their little arms are sticking out without pencil mark. I probably should have made this one a little bit longer. We could just bring it over this way a little bit. So there we've got the arms and the feet. And now, are you ready for the head? Are you ready? We are going to use another scrub paper. And you're gonna put glue all over this head. Maybe not the sides, because it's gonna stick out a little bit. So leave the, the sides without glue just a little bit of the sides. And put the froggy head right about there. Oh, maybe just a little bit higher. There we go. So you don't necessarily need to put glue on the, the eyeballs but pretty much just straight down the center, the nose and the middle of the mouth. And let's see if that looks froggy-like. You could decorate your frog. You know, you could put, um, you could draw on it because see how these frogs have little spots and splotches and all kinds of designs. So you go for it, you know, you could take a magic marker and put some cool markings on this you know, circles and squidgy lines, and you can do anything you want to your frog. And look, I have a little button in the shape of a heart. So if you want, you could put a little heart on your frog. Aww. <laughs> or you can make your frog a little heart necklace. Aww, need a heart. That's so cute. Or put them in the, put them in the eyes, little heart eyes. Aww. So pretty much you can do anything you want with your froggy. And uh, please uh, go outside, take a hike, and maybe you can hear or see some frogs out in nature. And we hope you enjoyed making your froggy craft today because I certainly enjoyed spending time with you. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Happy frog. Woo! Woo! Frog cam. <laughs> see you next time.